In this video, we'll talk about the satellite DNA. Satellite DNA are repetitive DNA consisting of short sequences which are repeated several times. Now, it carries variable AT rich repeat units known as repeat monomers and they can form an array which can totally range up to 100 megabase pairs. The monomer length of these repeat units could vary from 150 to 400 base pairs on average, but they could be as short as like 15 or even like 3-4 base pairs. And this is present in both animals and in plants. Now, this satellite DNA was first characterized from an ultra centrifugation reaction. So, in this cesium chloride density gradient centrifugation, the main genomic DNA forms a thick band at a specific buoyant density. But a small band was observed at a, at a lighter side. And this band is known as that satellite band. So if we plot that data for in an absorbance versus density graph, one can understand the main band is there in a thick position, having a buoyant density around 1.7. Whereas the satellite band has a buoyant density le lesser than that. It's lighter in uh, buoyant density. So this satellite DNA is very interesting, but how they are different compared to other average DNA sequence. So obviously, we can understand they have lesser buoyant density and this lesser buoyant density can actually uh, occur from difference in the GC content. They have much less GC content than the average of the genome and that can be calculated using this particular formula. Now let's talk more about the satellite DNA. So where can we find these satellite DNA in our genome or in the chromosome? They can be found in different regions. They can be found in, let's say, telomeres and centromeres, but they could be also interspersed in the chromosome. So what are the features of the satellite DNA? Obviously, as we mentioned, they are highly repetitive, tandemly repeated, and they have an um, array of repeats in a genome. So overall, they are AT rich that we have already talked about. Now, let's talk about several subtypes of satellite DNA. There could be alpha satellites, beta satellites, microsatellites, and mini satellites. All of these different categories are classified according to their repeat unit length and where they can found, where they are found actually. So for example, alpha satellites are highly enriched in the centromeric region. They have a repeat unit of 171 base pairs. Beta satellites are found in pericentric region. They have a repeat unit of approximately 68 to 70 base pairs. Now, microsatellites are very small repeat units, which have repeat units from 2 to 10 base pairs, and they are dispersed throughout the chromosome. In contrast, there are mini satellites, which are enriched in telomere and subtelomeric regions. Their repeat unit ranges from 10 to 100 base pairs. So there are different categories of these signals, and they are quite diverse. So in general, these repeat sequences has very high mutation rate. For example, microsatellites especially has very high mutation rate compared to other coding regions. And this high mutation rate is due to a phenomenon known as the replication fork slippage. So replication uh, enzymes fall down in that particular uh, repetitive region and there are high chances that wrong base pairs are incorporated in that particular sequence regions. Most likely uh, these repetitive DNA sequences are found in heterochromatinized structures like centromeres, like pericentric regions and generally they are not transcribed but they have a lot of significance in terms of uh, forensic significance because each of the individual has different number of tandem repeats. So let's say we talk about this particular AGAT units. In one individual, it can have seven repeats. In other individual, there might be four or let's say 12 repeats. So these repeats are very different between individual and this principle or this polymorphism principle is used in the forensic uh, system. So let's say there is a crime scene and there are two suspects. Suspect 1 has uh, the chromosomal configuration like this and the suspect 2 has the overall repetitive units like this. 
Now, when the repetitive units are actually uh, PCR amplified and compared between suspect and the crime, crime scenes, one can quickly understand who is the suspect among these two. And this is due to high polymorphism between these uh, short repeating units. So that is why from an forensic point of view, these repetitive DNA sequence are pretty important. You can get more notes and flashcards in my Facebook page. You can also follow us on Instagram page. You can support our channel by super thanks option. See you in next video.